Hello, this is Maplemation's animation team, and we're creating a series of tutorials to teach people how to sprite animate. For this part, we're actually going to cover animating. I know, waiting until chapter 2 to start animating is a bit weird, but hopefully chapter 1 equipped you with how to navigate your way around animate. Without further ado, let's begin! Let's start off with making a quick guideline as a temporary background before we get into making them. Just make this a guide layer, and then use the line tool to draw a line. You can double click the text to rename it, we'll just call it guide, then we make a layer above it to do our animation on. So first, we're going to animate an idol with a character here. We explain how to import sprites in chapter 1, so refer to that if you need to. We'll start with the first pose. Let's make it into a symbol, preferably a graphic, and then double click to go inside it. Be sure to click the sprite and trace the bitmap. Next, we just make a blank keyframe. So what we're going to do here is enable onion skin. To see the previous frame, you can mess around with the settings like the color and the range of how many frames you can see if you look at the timeline section from chapter 1. We just want to see one frame before, so it's not cluttered with loads of sprites. You just paste the next sprite in from either a sprite, or just drag the bitmap from the library and drag it into position and trace the bitmap. Keep repeating until the sequence is done. You can just press enter to see what we made. This doesn't look right. It's too quick, and the sprite jitters around. In other words, it's not aligned properly. Let's fix that. First off, you need to use the guideline we made earlier to help, well, guide our animation and keep it on track. Now is a good time to click the magnet icon you see in Properties to enable snapping. What this does is snap the sprite into a position so it's a bit more accurate. You can also edit the snapping settings by right-clicking the sprite, go to Snapping, and then messing around with what you have checked to see what fits for you. We recommend mostly keeping it off, but again, it's just preference. You can also just use the arrow keys to move and align sprites. Holding Shift and arrow keys moves it by a lot, but not holding it down and using the arrow keys on their own moves it by one pixel. Also, be sure you're aligning it right. What do we mean by that? Well, for this idol, you want to align it by the feet, hence why we use the alignment line. Sometimes animators fall into this trap of aligning by the head, which looks like a huge hand is pinching on it and grabbing it. It changes depending on context. This is something we'll go more in depth on later, but the general rule is align by the feet, and when they are in the air, align by the core of their body, somewhere around the center of their stomach. Okay, so now it's not jittering out of position too much, but it is fast. Well, we just need to add more frames. So just extend it by some amount of frames, until it looks right to you. We'll just use 5 in our case. There. Much better. Let's exit out of the symbol. To make sure it plays, we need to make sure the main timeline has frames too, since this is what we'll be seeing in the animation. Since it's an idle, we want to set it to looping. Again, we explain these in chapter 1, so do look at that if you need a refresher, or if you're confused. Lastly, we just want to cover a window real quick. The Align window. By going into Windows, then Align, you get this window. First, be sure to check Align to Stage if you want this to work. It's better if we show you what aligning does. If you click any icon in this row, the sprite will immediately align to the vertical edges and the center, and here is the horizontal alignment. You don't need to worry about distribution in space. For match size, you can, you know, stretch it horizontally, vertically, or just match the whole canvas. This is useful if you want an object like a black shape to just cover the screen in alpha fade, but we'll go more into that when we cover text and layer parenting. Quick side note. For consistent scaling, we recommend clicking your sprite or symbol, and then going up to Modify, Transform, and then clicking Scale and Rotate, or pressing Ctrl-Alt-S to open up the Scale and Rotate window. 100% is the default size, so it'll stay the same, 50% is half, and 25% is a quarter, and so on. You can also scale up, so 150 is 1.5 times, and 200 is 2 times. We hope you enjoyed watching the first part of Chapter 2. Till next time!